Hey everyone, now after putting some time into Black Myth Wukong, I got plenty of tips and tricks that will help you through your journey. If there's any that I may have missed or you found helpful, be sure to leave them down below in the comments. You may have come across this message after defeating a boss. Cannot absorb spirits without guidance in the beginning. Don't worry if you're not able to retrieve it just yet, you'll get the blessed gourd from an NPC later. Once you do, just head to the nearest shrine to retrieve those spirits. These are abilities that you can use from enemies that you have beaten and some you can upgrade to make them even stronger at a shrine. If you find yourself struggling with a boss, you can always come back after getting better skills. You can return to previous areas by selecting travel at any shrine. Unlike other games, specifically Souls game, don't worry if you die as it has no penalty like losing your items or souls. Instead, you'll spawn at the last shrine that you rested at. Incense Trail Talisman has unlimited use and function much like Liquid Death in Remnant, so have it slotted in your quick menu so you don't have to worry about backtracking or simply resetting a bad fight. As you explore from looting chests, you'll gather different size pieces of gold that you can sell or trade at the shrine for items called Will. Will will be needed in order to purchase items from the different merchants as well. Periodically, you'll get mine core pieces as random drops. You'll come across a few merchants during your journey, and some will require you to complete their quest line before having access. If you're curious about one of these quest lines with the man in stone, link will be below in the description and at the end of this video. Trade these in with the zoo dog found in early chapter 2 at the Crouching Tiger Temple in the Yellow Wind Ridge area. You know when you perform a perfect dodge when Wukong leaves an after image of himself. Gather everything you see as they will have its use later on in the game. That will give you the upper hand on those harder boss fights you may be struggling with than others. Anytime while you are out and about exploring you may see like a trail of lights or specks on the screen. If you follow that it's going to lead you to the next shrine where you can activate it. Take your time exploring in this game as it has a lot of splitting paths and little nooks and crannies that can be easily missed that may lead to items, chests, and NPCs to interact with. Keep your eyes out for this shown on screen and let me know what is the proper name for this as I don't know. These when you open them can vary from increasing your health, stamina, or give you consumables that you may use. Don't underutilize your ability to transform when you gain this. Sun Wukong has 72 different transformation and in Black Myth Wukong, although I don't think there will be that many, he has the ability to transform into other creatures to use their attack for a limited time with its own health bars. So if you're having issues with the camera at all in this game, whether it's locking onto bosses or just the enemies, I would say look into your settings and go under gameplay and then you can see auto lock on when attacking. I turn it on, on by default, all of this is normally off. So turn it on and play around with it and see if you actually like that better. There's also show or hide your headgear. So that's nice too, if you wanna see you know, Wukong's face or without the mask on, also having the benefits of it. So yeah, just be sure, you know, check out the settings you can hide or show the damage numbers and other settings here, but mainly I wanted to cover the, the camera with the target lock on. When you're fighting certain enemies, you may notice a blue flame or aura around them. These are ones that if defeated, you'll be able to get their spirit as an ability to use. Now for leveling and recommended skills to invest in. If you're familiar with Stellar Blade's skill tree and leveling up system, in Black Myth Wukong it is similar to that as every time you kill enemies and bosses it will net you experience in the top right corner of your screen. Every time the bar is filled up you get a skill point which you can then use towards different abilities. Experience gained from enemies will vary based on difficulty like the Yo Guai Chiefs and Kings netting more experience. Resting at a shrine will reset an area for you to farm if you choose, however certain enemies will not respawn. You can upgrade your skills at any time in this game which is quite nice without needing to rest at a shrine. Just open the self advanced screen from the menu provided you have sparks to spend. You can upgrade your skills as much as you like. 
I recommend investing into the smash stance in the beginning before branching out to the others and making the most out of a mobilized spell that you get at the start, since you can stop an enemy in their place and get some free damage in. Definitely avoid doing so while they're in the air as you can't reach them. I've had this happen to me a few times because I just mistimed it. Now, in the survival skill tree, get robust constitution for increased health to help able to take some hits. Rampant vigor for stamina since attacking, rolling, sprinting, and jumping, anything will be consuming stamina. And if you're out of stamina, you can still attack, but it will be slower, and Wukong will not be able to dodge, leaving you exposed to getting hit when you're out of stamina. Spiritual Awakening to boost mana to get the most out of your powerful abilities. Raffle Escalation and Raffle Might for crit chance and damage, and then Surging Momentum for increased damage. In Martial Arts, I recommend getting Mobile Spin and Swift Engage. Mobile Spin allows you to move while the staff is spinning to deflect projectiles like arrows in this game, and then Swift Engage, which increase engage distance of the light attack. Now in staff stance, I would recommend getting quick hand for increased charging speed of all stances. And then for transformation, definitely go with ferocious form which increases damage while you're transform. <laughs> And then Thunder Strike for when you get Cloud Step, an unveiling strike that can be performed with a charge heavy. Cloud Step is much nicer to me than Rock Solid because you're actually able to get some distance or close to distance on your enemies. I did try Rock Solid out for a bit, but I think I might go back to Cloud Step there. Now, there's definitely a lot you can do at the shrine besides the ability to fast travel, to change up your spells, equip different healing gourds, upgrade your spirits, and more. Reignite the Spark is where you can reset your skill points and relics as many times as you want completely for free. This is helpful if you want to experiment with different skills and combinations that fit your playstyle. Switch things up or maybe that skill or ability wasn't what you were looking for. Be sure to periodically check out the shrine. You have the ability to purchase and sell items and sometimes there can be new stock there for you to buy and these are different from the merchant stock you may encounter. Also check out craft for Wukong staff and armor upgrades. You can further upgrade the staff attack power and other attributes. While armor may offer better defense than your current gear and different abilities that may help with your playstyle. Now, if you found this guide helpful, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and take care.